What's up guys and welcome to a new episode of Spartan Ownership. Today's episode, we also have a guest, David Tien, and he has been in the pickup and dating industry for about 10 years now. So he really has a lot of experience when it comes to dating and relationships, advice for men, masculinity, uh, just self-development, really smart guy. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it is a bit short because we did get cut off in the middle where my computer ran out of battery. Uh, I mean, ran out of memory. So uh, he did agree to come back on the uh, on the uh, interview and on the show in August. But until then, um, this interview does have a lot of neat little golden nuggets for you guys for when it comes to your dating and relationship lives and just overall being in your masculine uh, and understanding the different energies, be it masculine or feminine energies, and how that relates to your life and your dating life. So hope you guys enjoy the content and talk to you soon. And we're back. All right. Cool. So, um, and, and, and just to kind of rehash, you were basically talking about the, uh, how like presence versus narcissism and how pickup artists are becoming emotionally yeah. obese and stuff. <laughs> yeah, emotionally. Well, I was saying um, a lot of the pickup artist advice is centered around, uh, well, a kind of self-aggrandizement and a deep status insecurity. Yeah. And they're coming, they're trying to fix the problem in a very emo, in a very psychologically unhealthy way. And then I was saying that the pickup artists from when I started over 10 years ago, a lot of the guys who were deep in it, posting, um, you know, hundreds of, of great articles uh, a month or so, well, maybe hundreds is in there, hundreds a year, <laughs> um, have largely retired because um, it's not, it's not, it's, it's meaningless and it's empty. It's not, um, it's not fulfilling. And right. um, when I was saying that until you find something outside of yourself, right. um, and then to something to, that you would be willing actually to die for. So children, I gave as an example, right. as an easy example, um, then you're not, your life is still largely unfulfilled. Like there's no meaning to it. Right. And I know a lot of people in, at the age range of your, uh, that you were mentioning that you watch this are still just struggling to find work or find a career, you know, like make money to survive and do what they want. Right. Money is great. I mean, it's a, it's a, an, an enabler. It, it enables you to have the freedom to pursue other goals. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand, but understand this, that as long as you're just going after money, you're still in survival mode, basically. Like you're not surviving. You're not in like literal survival, survival mode. Yeah. Cause there's, there's welfare, but um, you know, you're basically just trying to make money to make ends meet, but it's not for any greater purpose. Right. As long as it's not for any greater purpose, it's not going to be fulfilling. Um, it will, in the moment, maybe there's some pleasure in it, but it will um, satiate. And it's raining here. I hope it's not too loud. That's so it's fun being here. like under an awning and it's raining outside. It's sort of this refreshing yeah, air. <laughs> for sure, man. And um, I want to. Uh, awesome, by the way, I'm going to have to rewatch that to process that because like I said before, it was, it was definitely different from what I'm used to hearing and, uh, it's, it sounds on point. Um, and I feel largely alone in, in the messaging I've been putting out over the past couple of years. So it was so gratifying watching Anthony give that talk because it was one yeah. of the rare times. And Mark, Mark is, Mark Manson's um, bang on there too, but, um, and, and, uh, some of what Hypnotica puts out. Mm -hmm. But almost every and Steve, Steve's been putting some good. Steve Maya has been putting some good stuff out. But um, yeah, it's I'm large. I, it's a it's a lonely uh, a message out here. I don't think the, the market's ready for it yet. But right there, you go, man. Yeah, cool, man. And um, what uh, during your speech, I was like really hooked when you started talking about polarity and the way you were talking about it, the way you were articulating it was really cool and refreshing. Because it really spoke to my just almost spiritual side, but my psychological side and and it was it was on point and I think it was very practical at the same time. So uh so what are the most fundamental things to keep in mind when working on being a more polarized man, basically? Polarized man. Yeah, I remember seeing that question and thinking, um, I wanted to ask you for clarification on what you meant by that. Um, I could clarify uh, if you want a bit more. Yeah. Okay. So you were talking about polarity and how to be, um, how to increase your masculine uh, polarity, basically. And uh, you know, there's well, the 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you're asking, how can I be a more masculine man? Is that what you mean? Yeah, in or terms of polarity. Polarized? Yeah. Um, uh, okay, that's great. Yeah, um, and I think guys who would watch the Spartan uh, channel would, would be interested in that for sure. Or, um, first of all, let's, uh, let's just be clear about why polarity, what polarity really is. Right. Because it's easy for people to misunderstand it doesn't, if you're a man, like if you're a male, if you have a penis, it doesn't make you automatically like that, that your essence is masculine. This is not even that necessarily that you want to be masculine. You know, some guys who maybe you don't want to be masculine. Maybe you want to get a masculine woman. Hey, cool. Like maybe you want like a, a career woman who is um, driven, gets you done, you know, like, and maybe you want to be the, the poet who like who stays at home and writes poetry while she goes out and makes the money through her, uh, you know, driving career, you know, draw, like really tough, what's the word, uh, more masculine job. Right. And so I don't want to tell you, like, it's, it's, there's no, um, if you want a feminine woman, uh, then you are going to need to be in your masculine essence. And if you have at your core, if you are at your core masculine, um, then you would only find fulfillment by exploring your masculine, by strengthening it. Mm -hmm. um, it's simply it's just that it won't make you happy <laughs> being in a feminine um, modality uh, and, and that's really the only reason it's, um, so uh, there are many things that you can do to become more masculine and I'm sure that uh, when you talk to Ted Rice and uh, well pretty much it like it seems like that's the main fitness goal other than the CrossFit guys but um, the, mo the main fitness goal is to do like any actually any Olympic lifting will, will help um, squats and deadlifts will jack your T levels. Um, anything that will raise your testosterone will uh, get you more in your masculine. But um, in addition to the biochemistry, so in, in addition to the physical, um, being in your mental masculine or your, your emotional masculine is um, something you can develop daily. And uh, meditation is one thing that I mentioned, mm -hmm. and I know that you wanted to ask about. Um, but anything where you meet a challenge that scares you a little bit, or maybe a lot, and you take on the challenge, um, is going to keep you in your masculine. Mm -hmm. Anything where you're in your organizing principle, like you step back and you, you plan things out, you organize things, you, um, like strategy, strategy, yeah, strategy, yeah. abstract thought, um, any philosophizing is ph philosophy is a masculine activity. Um, still to this day, philosophy is, is one of the most gender imbalanced departments or disciplines in, in the academy hmm. because it's by its very nature. Um, and I think a lot of philosophers, it's not politically correct to even talk about masculine and feminine. Um, so they're not going to acknowledge it. But many female philosophers, the ones I've talked to, um, say it's, it's, there's, there isn't a real feminine philosophy being done or there are very few people trying to do it. So abstract thought, um, sitting in silence, powering through pain. These are all ways of, um, embodying the masculine or, uh, expressing it and developing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, I, I was actually a bit confused when we first spoke because we were talking about masculine polarity versus feminine polarity. And you mentioned feminine polarity being more like, uh, enjoying uh, I think you were talking about like sensual pleasures or something. Was that it? Yeah, sensory. Okay. Yeah, the senses. So it was would would like say eating dessert be an example of being in your feminine? Oh yeah, drinking beer is a feminine activity. So you see a lot of these dudes who are basically pussies. They sit around. I mean, I love beer because right. that's something that's very important. You don't want to be in your masculine all the fucking time. Right. I think a lot of American dudes are in are in distorted masculines. So, in other words, they're they're on the firing range, you know, the shooting range. They're carrying guns around. They're they're on the outside masculine, right? But on the inside, the activities that they're doing are, are mostly feminine. Hmm. Okay, mostly um, sensory, pursuing sex, pickup artistry is a feminine activity, right? Because it's you know, seduction. The pickup artist, the, some of the best, like Russell Brand, you see his outside is very feminine. Right, he was a lot more feminine before. Now he's balanced out more. <laughs> but um, in his heyday of fucking a lot, he was very feminine. Like, look at the, the rock stars, the glam rock period. It's like all of the guys who fucked thousands of women. Mm -hmm. You know, they, 
because of their dandy nature, they're very much in their feminine. Pursuing sex is like pursuing chocolate cake. Right. It's the same fucking thing to a masculine man. It, I look at it and it's like, wow, you're really good at getting chocolate cake. That's awesome. There was a time when I needed chocolate cake. There was a time when <laughs> like, I had no sweets in my life. And I really wanted, I just hank, hankering after chocolate. Right. And I spent two or three years trying to get chocolate. And I got it. Tastes good. Right. Now I'm moving on to bigger things, right? But it's, in a way, it's just feeling your body uh, or, or your senses, mm -hmm. your tongue, your penis, with good sensations. And mm -hmm. um, you know, this is why in, in history... Uh, the, the great thinkers um, have always looked down on the sole pursuit of pleasure, right. hedonists, um, because it is, yeah, a fem well, it is a feminine activity, and a lot of the feminine was was looked down upon, except right. for some some functions of the feminine. So, would you say that hedonism is more of a, if anything, feminine philosophy? If anything, oh well, it's, hedonism isn't really a philosophy, oh, okay. um, but the pursuit of pleasure. Well, I mean, I suppose you could make there are philosophies that are hedonist. Um, the pursuit of pleasure, yeah, of course. Right. A sensual pleasure and sensual pleasure. Um, well, again, the masculine is finding a challenge and pain and powering through it. Right. Okay. So, in what, you know, I suppose the uh, overcoming of push anxiety was a masculine thing. Okay. Uh, but then the, the overall pursuit. So, everything has within it masculine and feminine, everything. Okay. Including you. We should be balanced, actually. So, once you have children, you really want to get into your feminine. In fact, your body will naturally because of hormonal changes um, imposed upon you by rubbing up against your wife uh -huh. or your girlfriend, uh, your pregnant, um, lactating, hormonally charged woman right. um, cause changes in the, ma the male brain. Exactly. The male brain. Right. So, and th that's what, kind of what I want to say is that it's, it's hard to tell sometimes. And you also mentioned being uh, present as a masculine thing as well, just to just wanted to add that in there before I go on. You mentioned being like aware of, of, of the fact that you're an observer, that your consciousness, once you're grounded in that, that's a masculine thing, right? That's why you said meditation is masculine, right? Yeah. Um, actually, just last night I was talking to my meditation teacher, um, and he was, we were talking about um, masculine feminine polarities in terms of meditation mm -hmm. on the Shiva and Shakti. Um, so meditation itself is a Shiva activity. It was born out of the male um, deity, right? And um, uh, so there, there's when you're depending on what type of meditation practice you have. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there are feminine styles of meditation that I'm not aware of, um, but they're out there. Right. Um, I think they're, those are like more of um, the herbalist ones, like the ones who are out in nature and you meditate with a tree or something. Like I don't, know, I actually don't know, but they they exist. Um, but most okay. of the meditation, the popular meditation. Like transcendental meditation, which is what I practice, right. is about finding an inner stillness, about mm. finding um, being um, finding a stability, right. while the, the chaos of your thoughts go whirling around you. Okay, um, and then being in the abstractions, like living, dwelling in the abstract, because your eyes are closed, you're not moving, you're literally um, in the mind, mm -hmm. um, and uh, trying to transcend, you know, that whole sensory world. Um, that is a, a, a masculine activity. And then the end result is supposed to be clarity and focus. Greater clarity of thought, focus. And those, are, those are all 100%. masculine things. Which leads me to ask, because you said that at the end, it's good to be balanced. But, I mean, if you're a masculine man, like, I struggle with this sometimes where I, I, I'm with a woman and I, like, become very emotional with her in a sense where I'm like affectionate and I really like, yeah, you wrote that. What does that mean? Affectionate. It's What's like an example, of being an example would be like, we're hanging out and instead of being, I feel like, like that polarized energy, for example, when you meet a woman and you, re and you really feel that magnetic desire, it kind of, I don't know how it exactly happens, but it might have to do with novelty, but sometimes I'm with a woman and I'm just, affectionate and I don't feel that magnetic polarized desire it's almost like we're both almost feminine or something and like I feel like this is weird I'd rather be more quiet what like quiet what do you mean by affectionate like affectionate would be like um you know saying little words like oh you're so cute oh you look like a little pumpkin blah blah, blah. like saying stuff that makes you feel like the oxytocin you know what I mean like it, it, you don't feel that like desire to just ah. It's more like a 
little sister desire. You know what I mean? Like, not a little sister desire. That's a weird sentence, but it's like you're sure, being... No, I'm, uh, are you kind of yeah, following me? Okay. Or, um, I yeah. think I might be a little confusing, but I don't know if you got that. Yeah, can you say a few more? Why is that bad? Sure. So, it just makes me wonder if... Should a man be very expressive? Uh, because it makes him... It kind of puts him in his feminine too much. Like, that's why I, I wanted to ask, what's the appropriate amount for a man to be in his mask? Like, because... Yeah, well, I started the answer with this, um, and I think most guys don't... They just ignore it, or they they don't listen, which is okay, because what they're most concerned about is getting the end result. Hmm. Um, but it's life is much more complex and subtle than all of that. So I started off by saying, I'm not going to tell you to be more masculine. It's not better to be more masculine. Right. Let's just get clear about that. It's not better in itself. If you want to be feminine, that's awesome. I'm very feminine, man. Are you kidding? I love desserts. <laughs> the more you talk and get talkative, the, you can be super attractive to women by being feminine. Mm -hmm. Right. So because most, especially Western women, are actually quite masculine. Right. But, uh, you know, you can, I mean, just the most, there are some guys at the 21 convention who are, very attractive, as you can, the more flamboyant ones you might be able to guess. I'm not going to name any names. Right. Um, and they're incredibly feminine in, their, in the way that they come across. But they have, I know for certain, they got that killer instinct, which is masculine. Hmm. So they, they relate to the feminine. The feminine goes, oh, nice. It's like a gay dude, like a gay fashion <laughs> dude. Girls love that. I'm like, oh, my God, look at that ass, big bang, you know. Oh, my God, come here. Where did you get those nails done? Where did you get the hair so beautiful? Where did you get that bag? Really? And they get in there like, oh, yeah, I'm talking. And then that, but they're a man with a penis, right? Hmm. He's hot body and he's got that fucking killer look, right? <laughs> and then when her guard's down, she's like, oh, we're just playing around like girls. And she's, and then it's exciting. It's fun. She's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then suddenly, whoa, whoa, oh, yeah. You know, that's the, the, the allure of the dandy. Both. Huh. Um, Robert Greene wrote about this in Art of Seduction. Oh, yeah, I remember that's that. That's a good intro to the dandy. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the typical American view of what a masculine, well, I shouldn't say American, everybody, fucking, the typical 21st century view of masculine is like, it's <laughs> 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 nothing to do with being masculine. Man. It's not, <clears throat> you're not like beating on a woman. That's not good. Right? Like, I remember watching a Friday Night Lights or something like some football movie where this guy was taking testosterone, like supplements, like steroids. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were bloodshot. And he was just, he was a linebacker. He was just running over people. Right. And then he got, he got um, arrested for rape uh, in the movie. <laughs> oh, okay. And they were like, oh, shit, you know, we should have said something earlier. We knew he was on juice. And that's not masculine. That's, masculinity is getting a bad rap, thinking it's aggressive, it's domineering, it's like power and through shit, like all, like in an aggressive manner. Um, the masculine is stable. The masculine feel the challenge um, will move forward. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's so, um, but look, so you have some masculine. No one, if, you, if you're asking what the right mix, mix is, it depends on who you are. You've got to self-diagnose because some people are more uh, feminine and that's fine. Right. You have to know who you are. That's why self-knowledge is so important. 100%. And um, the other thing is, you're reacting to your environment. So if you're in the favelas, favelas, favelas in Brazil, mm -hmm. and you know your life is in danger, you, you're going to have to stay masculine. Right. Um, if you're in you know maximum peniten security penitentiary, um, you're going to have to stay in your masculine. Right. Um, if you're poor, you have to stay masculine. But if you're in like like where I'm at, there's no reason, you know. And uh, uh, just to get girls, why? Just to get girls. Like, so find where you're happy. Happiness is. Mm -hmm. Where's your? If you feel that you're not happy, that's a problem, okay? And or happy maybe too superficial a word, but if you don't feel fulfilled, um, if you don't have that deeper contentment, uh, then you should explore whether you're too much in your feminine when you're in fact your essence is masculine, mm -hmm. or whether your essence is more feminine and you're too mass. I mean, I know plenty of guys who want to just play the guitar and. And write poetry and shit, you know, or go out into nature and, and be one with nature and shit, like do yoga. <laughs> but they're being forced because their guy friends are around them to play basketball all the time or to like work out with weights. You know? mm. um, so there's no, just being masculine in and of itself is not necessarily a good thing for a man. Right, right. And so there's no like optimal, you know, mix. Um, 
right. that makes sense. Yeah, I, 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 I could see how, like, you know, for, oh, wow, I think we're uh, getting close to the time period. But um, yeah. I, just, I just wanted to, like, uh, end it off by saying, like, I could see how, uh, you know, how a lot of men might have different essences and some might be a bit more feminine, some might be more masculine. There's a spectrum. But if you're a guy like, you know, you're a Spartan ownership kind of guy, um, you're most likely, and I think even David Data goes on to say that most men are primarily masculine. There's a smaller percentage that are mixed. Um, oh, but, wait, wait, we're all mixed. But what you mean is we're our essence. Predominantly. Essence. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Essence, the core. Yeah. Which you do on the outside, you can wear a dress and mm-hmm. still be a master. You can still be the fucking rock, right? Like, mm-hmm. And the rock is a good example of a a masculine, I think a masculine core with weight, you know, his, with good acting, with acting, mm-hmm. it opened up a whole other you know, sides of him. So, right. so yeah, uh, uh, most of your viewers are, are more masculine core, masculine essence. Yeah, they're, they're more masculine essence, but I think that in society, and I, David Data mentioned that in his book, The Way of the Superior Man, is that a lot of people think that they're balanced, but in reality, they might, like you were saying, be engaging in something that they don't necessarily want to engage in. And it's like in today's society, we get bogged down with a lot of feminine values nowadays with feminism, well, with all this let's stuff. Let's get concrete and like your example of affectionate. Right. Um, what was the, do you not like saying, oh, you're cute or what are the examples you gave? Like, well, the problem with that, yeah, the problem with that was that when I, sometimes I would kind of go overboard with it. Because I think it's, it has to do a little bit with how I was raised. My mother was overly affectionate with me, but to a almost slightly detrimental point sometimes because I'd get really angry. But then I found myself doing the same thing. And it's like, holy shit, I'm repeating patterns that I've um, been kind of conditioned into. Um, affectionate. So like hugging her. Let's get concrete and specific. Sure. Practice. Like hugging, so like- little kisses, little like little words. But then... The more you do that, it's like you kind of lose that touch with that feeling of uh, polarity that that there was in the beginning. And it almost becomes like you were saying to women. Oh, I see. But yeah. Yeah, sure. Are you able to pop into your masculine whenever you want? Yeah. Like after I get into that kind of flow, it's almost like the momentum of being in that state takes over. And and it's hard to pop out back into like your polarity. Okay. So I have... um a module in my course called Invincible. Mm-hmm. And um, Invincible is, we open it a few times a year. And in that module, so right now it's closed, so you can go to the waiting list. Sure. But the, in the module, um, it there's an exercise on masculinity mm-hmm. so that it trains you to go there. So you can play with a, a one-year-old little girl. You can go and play Lego. I love time playing with my goddaughter and and my nieces and all yeah. that. It's just so much fun. Like, they're so innocent. There's so much play. You know, but if a fucking intruder came I mean, I could fucking kill him. I was there. <laughs> right, but, right, like, right, You have to be able to pop in like a fucking man. Mm-hmm. But then play again and play, you know. And within a few seconds, so we try to reduce the amount of time of conversion. Oh, like wow. That's really interesting. Turn over time, right? So you start off with five seconds. You bring your heart rate back down. Um, and then you go back into your masculine. And you bring, so you have to be able to control the masculine. That's the biggest... Um, one of the biggest problems is entering your aggressive or assertive nature, your masculine nature. Um, you can lose yourself there. A lot of guys do. I feel like in America, they're losing themselves there. Right. Um, and they're just acting out uh, and just fighting for no reason. I mean, look at the, the the rates of men being jailed versus women and the violent crime of men versus women. I mean, like, so to be able to be there as a warrior, killing, almost like, I, I don't I never kill anyone, so I don't know. But right. Like being there, ready to defend. Right. And then within a few seconds, calming your heart rate and your breathing and right. being back mentally into playing Lego with the little girl, playing dolls, you know, mm. or even spending a whole day playing dolls and shit like that, like um, with your daughter or something. And then being able to go and be masculine when, whenever it's necessary. Wow. That's just, that's just as. That's just something that every man needs to train. Um, wow. And all you, it's actually quite simple. <laughs> um, you just need to understand the theory behind it and train it. So there's a, I think it's about an hour long uh, talk or right. like explanation of it. Mm-hmm. And then the exercise itself is um, about 10 minutes. I think you can do it in five minutes. So you just do that like every day for a week. 
and it'll start to, at that point, it will already become more ingrained in you. So mm -hmm. you can just practice it once a week. That is an awesome explanation, man. So it's all about controlling, being able to control your masculine and not being like... Oh, yeah. I mean, like, it, it is very masculine to be affectionate, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, the, think of a, 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 like a dad, like a strong, like a rock or a John Chain or whatever, yeah. right? Like a big, with his little daughter, two-year-old daughter, right. holding her hand, and he's just like, you know, patting her head, and he can be masculine there. He's not being a woman. Right. He's being a daddy, being dad. Mm-hmm. So hopefully you understand that in the bedroom. Definitely do. Daddy, daddy does not mean like banging her. You know, like daddy is not beating on daughter, right? Right. It's a different dynamic. So um, there's nothing wrong with playing the soft and hard and soft mm. um, while being um, masculine. Beautifully said, man. Beautifully said. And I really appreciate that. And uh, just tell the viewers um, how to get in touch with your work, how to get in touch with you, how they can pursue more. Yeah, great. Um, so go to Aura Transformation. That's one word, Aura, A-U-R-A, transformation.org. That's our main site. And you can see from the drop-down menu, there's there's like products, coaching, and events. So just go to products, drop down. You'll find Invincible there. I think the guys are really like Invincible. And then you can get on the waiting list um, just by entering your email. And, um, and then you'll get notified when it opens. Um, also, join the private Facebook group. You can interact with me directly right there. So if you go on Facebook, you Google, uh, I mean, you search in Facebook for Man Up. There's a Man Up uh, closed group. And then just put a join request. So it's Man Up, Masculine Interview for the Intelligent Man. Awesome, man. I really appreciate I appreciate the interview. Great talk. I'm going to have to rewatch this Great to question, really process man. this. Thank you. Great thank question. you. You are on the right track for sure. <laughs> Thanks, David. Awesome. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, man. Thanks a lot. All right, man. Take care.